Well, I think if you're interested in evolution it, and genetic evolution, it's in a way very frustrating that until recently we could only study the genomes of organisms that live today and try to infer what happened in the past. These techniques now allow us to, at least in some cases, actually go back in time and study DNA and genomes from ancestral organisms or extinct organisms. And if you like, catch evolution red-handed, so to say, do a little bit of time travel in some cases. So what we do is really to work together with archaeologists and museum keepers who have valuable bones. And we then get those bones preferably into our laboratory where we drill little holes in them with a dentistry drill and use a bone powder to dissolve the bone then and extract, purify the DNA that's there. That we then treat in various ways, ways so we can feed it into DNA sequencing machines and tease out the genetic information that is in the DNA. So the oldest DNA that anyone has retrieved is a group in Denmark that have studied a horse that is 700,000 years old. But that is then preserved in the permafrost, so continuously frozen. The oldest human DNA that we have been able to study is a bit over 400,000 years old from a site in Spain. One of the exciting findings when we compared the Neanderthal genome to present day people is that it turned out that Neanderthals have actually mixed with the ancestors of everybody who lives outside Africa. So if your roots are outside Africa, in Europe or Asia or elsewhere, about one or two percent of your DNA comes from Neanderthals. So in a sense, if you like, they're not totally extinct. They live on a little bit in, in many of us today. One thing that is beginning to be more clear is that this genetic contribution from Neanderthals actually matters for some of us today. That are, for example, variants of genes that confer risk for diabetes, the type of diabetes you tend to get in old age that come from Neanderthals. There is a variant that allows people in Tibet to live at high altitudes where there is very little oxygen in the air that comes from these relatives of Neanderthals in Asia. And there are genes that are important for how we find a fight infectious diseases, variants of such genes that come from Neanderthals. So we're actually learning that this also has importance for how we function today.